Okay, I was reading this article um, on CNN.com, and its title is "Why the U.S. Has the Most Mass Mass Shootings." Mass. Anyway, I'm gonna put a link to it down there. And I noticed some interesting things about it. Um, there's a section titled "The Copycat Copy Copycat Phenomenon." I don't know why I can't talk. And in it, it says some researchers believe it believe these mass killings can be contagious. <clears throat> Excuse me. One killing or shooting increases the chances that others will occur with a, within about two weeks in an infection that lasts about 13 days. What? Okay. The copycat phenomenon is more acute in the United States because guns are more accessible than in other countries. Access to firearms is a significant predictor of these incidents. So, in a section that is titled about copycatting, you're saying they copycat because guns are around. So it has nothing to do with, let's say there's a mass shooting in this place right here tomorrow, and four people are killed, that it's going to be talked about for a week. The picture of the, of the perpetrator is going to be, you know, put on all social media, news people are going to have it, it's going to be in the newspapers, it's going to be on the TV, for days afterwards. And then you take this troubled person over here who sees that and they're like, man, nobody likes me. I suck. My life is boring. Hmm. I want my 15 minutes. I'm going to go out and I'm going to do something worse than that. So they talk about me for two weeks. So that has nothing to do with it. That is not copycatting. But you're telling me that somebody just sitting in their house is like, hmm, I can get a gun. Let's go kill a bunch of people. That is copycatting. Um, and so there's two things wrong with this. One is obviously the, that's not copycatting. Being influenced by an independent item or event or or something is not copycatting. Wanting to do something like somebody else is copycatting. So obviously you don't understand that. Secondly, access to firearms is a significant predictor of these events. Okay, I have 21 guns. So I should be a little bit higher than say somebody has 10 guns on doing a mass shooting. That's what you're telling me. Where, where, what's the, what's the number? What if you have over thirty guns, you will definitely become a mass shooter. What, what, I mean, what? Where do you come up with this at? So let's continue. And then I want to say it's up the court when I was looking at it, it was updated eight thirty three a.m. Eastern Time, Friday, August twenty eighth, two thousand fifteen. Okay. Now from the article. The numbers do show that more restrictive gun laws make a difference. Um, Lackford, the guy who wrote the article, points to Australia as an example. The country had four mass shootings between 1987 and 1996. Of those incident, after those incidents, public opinion turned against gun ownership and Parliament passed stricter gun laws. Australia has not had a mass shooting since. Hmm. Um, Monash University. October 2002, five shot, two dead. Hectorville Siege, 2011, six people shot, three dead. The Hunt family murders on September 9th, 2014, five dead. Now, depending on the number of mass shooting, of people with mass shootings, yeah, maybe not, you can't really count those. And I'm pretty sure that that's exactly what they did. It has to be eight or above be a mass shooting because we can't include these incidents but to me um, five people is the least number of people shot 
that's a significant, that's an entire family. In fact, one entire family was taken out. Okay? Three kids, the mother and the father, were all killed. The entire family. To me, that's mass. So, not really. I mean, if you're going to tell me that four mass shootings made them change their minds, and now you've had three shootings with multiple people, and and anything. Um, and I want to talk about something else. It was very anti-gun. The entire article just had an anti-gun slant. It wasn't talking, I mean, it did talk a little bit about, you know, the media, you know, broadcasting this information and people seeing it and want to embolize it, embolize it, um, you know, do it, copycat, the real copycat. Um, but it was mostly anti-gun. Um, they both had two, two areas were talking about, you know, the guns are the problem. And then at the end, it says, it is possible these things do happen. So be prepared and learn from it before you have a tragedy of your own. Okay, I have learned from this. I carry a gun with me. If I'm at, you know, again, place A, and I see some scumbag walk in with a gun and just start shooting people, I'm prepared. I'm going to kill that person. If I see somebody walk in, you know, strapped with explosives to their chest, I'm probably going to shoot that person. If I see somebody walk in and start dumping gasoline everywhere and they got a flare in their hand, I'm going to shoot that person. Depending on where they're at, but first of the gasoline. Hopefully the flare isn't lit yet. If I see somebody walk in with a machete and start whacking people, I'm going to shoot that person. I am prepared. Another thing, um, when I looked up the mass shootings in Australia, there was a good number of people that were burned in arsons, um, beaten with hammers, and stabbed. So, yeah, you might have gotten rid of the gun problem, but people are still killing each other in massive numbers. So, yeah, take away the guns. These other murders and stuff still exist. So think about that before you start talking about passing gun laws.